the, the, the title is, is, as Michal said, an Irish political slogan that was used for a party maybe 15 years ago, I think. And when I was asked for a title for this presentation in uh, June, I just gave it quickly. And I think it summed up where we're all at and, and maybe where the future will be at. Um, but what I'll deal with today is the research group or one of the research groups within Working Group 4 um, that came about, I don't know, through a convergence of research interests, really, and has become somewhat of the measured output of the Working Group 4. Um, and it focuses on whether you can deduce it from the title or not, Land Lex, which we used as a common thematic for our work, which was lexicography of the landscape, just as a basis for us to merge our research interests into and to work from it. Uh, we're generally a three that set up the group. However, we're very ably supported by a number of people in this audience. So it's most certainly not about the three names you see on this screen, uh, rather indeed about all the people that are in the room. And Alina and Jeffrey can't because they're teaching today. So am I actually teaching today, but I'm not teaching here. Uh, they couldn't attend because their semester started. So has mine, but hey, I'm here and here we go. Um, so Landlex sort of developed back in Barcelona in 2016. Um, we, as a group, saw a common theme, a common area that merged our theoretical research interests and provided some empirical setting for us to execute those research interests. Um, so landscape came about as the basis of what some of the members in the group previously had published and presented at Yorlex conferences, particularly in the areas of field, actually, was one paper. So we decided on that and we went with that. We stayed very literal to the title of the group in that we were looking at lexicology and lexicography. And I suppose we stayed to the ethos of the cost action in that we created a community, a community that exists still, that is researching, that is generally collaborative and is pan-European. So I think we've ticked a number of boxes in that way, but ultimately we'll be judged by our output. And I think our output in 16 to 18 months has been quite good. Um, when soul searching a bit during the training school, actually preparations, uh, I came across a, po a poem, uh, it's from an Irish poet, John Montague, and it summed up what we're trying to do with it. And it summed up the way dictionaries sometimes interact with us is that, this is a poem, it's called actually The Rough Field, or the, yeah, The Rough Field, and it's from a, a collection called The Lost Tradition, and it was like where the poet John Montague described the landscape as a manuscript that we could no longer read. And sometimes I feel like that about a dictionary, uh, is that, you know, do we actually read dictionaries? Do we see them for being literary pieces of work, or are they just transactional objects that we take from we, what we want, and when they don't give it to us, we give out about them? There's a little bit of that sometimes in it. So when we thought the landscape was, was a very, very good, uh, area to research simply because it was pan-European. Uh, it is homogenous superficially. I mean, you can look at a mountain that becomes the same thing to most people. But when we delve into the dictionary, we found that on a pan-European uh, scale, a hill wasn't a hill, a daisy wasn't a daisy, red wasn't the red we thought it was. And all of that sort of became apparent and has created different trajectories of research and not conflicts of research, but points of argumentation that we're sort of growing on and, and, and learning to debate more. So, as I said, where we developed from was, was really all of this. My own area is phraseology, uh, Alina's was uh, lexical analysis, Jeffrey's was variation. We had a collective interest in the phraseological collocational area. So we sat down and put our heads together with a number of other people in this room and said, look, we think this is the way to go. Um, we didn't have a context. And when you're setting up a research group, you need a project or a context. So the context we took was landscape. I actually can't really tell you where that came from. I don't know where it came from. It came from someone's head, but we, we don't know why, but it's working. And that's it, and I think we'll move forward with that. Um, and as I said, there's, it's, it's rich. It's actually quite rich. And this, the findings we've got back uh, are quite rich, but have showed some, some gaps for us to address as well. So in our most basic sense, we're looking at language variation in time and space through the phraseolo phraseology of language. We have three key tenets of research. We're looking at landscape features, and I'll just give you some examples there, hills, wood, fields, etc. plants and colours of the landscapes. So we have a triangulated model that when we started initially, we played around it a lot. Then we sort of centred on Daisy, and that's really still where we're at in the phase one. Um, there's no, we need to limit that a little bit, I think, to be honest. Um, we have to be humble and modest in what we, we're doing here. This, we're effectively... Uh, using free time in many cases as, as a number of us are teaching to, to work on this. So we keep our expectations and our modesty in check with what we can do. We're currently on Daisy, Hill and Red. We're no further at the moment, 
but that's as much as we have been able to do in, in, in the 18 months. So um, what we've tried to do, obviously, in keeping with the tradition of the group, we've also understood that the overall action is, by its name, e-lexicography. So we're integrating the technological side of it, even though, if I may say, sort of on prima facie evidence that none of us are overtly technological in our background or in our training, we're beginning to integrate that slowly but surely. And the training school did that a little bit, and I, but I'll speak about that myself later on uh, on another slide. So what we're trying to do is collect the data. Now, the data is ranging generally, if you look at the Landlex website, it's ranging from the 11th century up to, well, you can say the 21st century. But the concentration of data from the dictionaries we're looking at, which are typically monolingual European dictionaries, falls in between the 16th century and the 19th century. We have particular concentration in the 16th and 17th century. That data is, is currently collected and it's available to browse. Uh, it's not hugely profound. It's, it's working data. Uh, now, we also have to look at digitized data, obviously, as well, because when we're dealing with historical dictionaries, not everything is digitized. So we're looking at the non-digitized and the digitized data, and we're going to use that through uh, the modicum of Atlas TI. Now, we had a session on Atlas TI in the training school, and we modeled some landscape words through that for the participants and for also the people in the group to understand when we work in this way, this is what we will do, even if we're not necessarily versed in it as a background. So Jeffrey is in the area of TEI which has been mentioned a few times in presentations today. So what we're trying to do is create a model for cross-language comparison. Now, obviously, that will be rich linguistically, but also it'll be, have an explanatory conceptual base to it, where you can say, look, why is a hill like this in one language and like that in another language? So it allows us to get some investigation into the European cultural framework of how concepts, albeit homogenous on the surface, are described heterogeneously, but then seem to be the same to everyone's eye, you know? Uh, and then we're also trying to, which is a, uh, probably going to be one of the more challenging parts of it, is building a, multi a lexicographical multilingual prototype. We've had some tentative steps in that direction, uh, but it's, as you will imagine, not as easy as it might seem. Uh, where Alina uh, Vilava, who's, uh, her, whose expertise generally sits into the area of morphology and morphological roots, she's going to work on that to look at the commonalities and differences and cross-linguistic intersections to see how languages evolved, how they talk to each other, how they influenced each other, and how that still happens in their recording. So that's our way forward. Uh, at least theoretically and empirically, with it being underpinned by technology, obviously. So in the example, just to give you this, DAISY was probably the focus of our output for the Budapest meeting. Uh, in February just passed. We obviously had a meeting then in Lisbon. It was a special meeting um, that was a little bit more scattered in its content, where we sort of just wrote papers. It was the first formal meeting of the group, so we had to start somewhere. And we started in a position that we, we sort of went from wide to narrow, you know, but we at least got some findings on the board for each of the tenets of the landscape, the colour and the plant. Um, so in the case of Bellis, Bellis Perennis, I think maybe Evelyn made some reference to it briefly as, as, as work going on in, in, in our group, is that, like I said about Hill, plants aren't necessarily the same thing. We've had to take recourse to Latin all the time to find out where we can base our understanding on what a plant is or what, what the plant is that has been spoken about. But we found looking through dictionaries that obviously there's an absence of the Latin classifier and where that seems to happen, you find there's greater scope for a misinterpretation of the flower that's, or the wild plant, maybe for the want of a better term, that's being described. So we find that, look, it's, it's, it'll be no surprise to anyone sitting in this room that dictionaries are inaccurate. Well, yeah, in some cases they are when the concept is not fully understood at the outset. And there's an element of, while the Latin is the safe point of reference, it's not always showing that even when the Latin gloss or classifier was there, it, it sometimes led to inaccuracies as well. Where another, probably veering more in my own aspect, is what we're trying to do is develop the phraseological wealth or the collocational idiomatic behaviour of these words in the language to show how they're semantically extending or semantically departing and what superordinate meaning they're gaining outside of their normal stuff within a phraseological sphere. So we're trying to move from word to phrase as well in this. It's not, so, it's not all about words by no means. But also an interesting point that came up, and we saw a lot of it in Lisbon, was that uh, you see, and it's, it's rewarding the pan-European title of, of what we do, is that you can see the intercultural influence in titles, uh, or sorry, in the dictionary representations of these uh, objects we're looking at, in that, I think, for example, in, in Estonian, we could see that um, Daisy was highly influenced by German, and um, there was lots of movement around it. It classified it very, very well for us, but a key point, and I'll go on to it in the Lisbon meeting, was that we had to set some parameters of investigation of what we were doing here, um, and I'll just move to that. 
briefly after this. So if you look at what we've been doing, just I, I know we sort of go under the radar, radar a little bit. We met in Barcelona in 2016, somewhere in, in the basement. It sounds very secretive, but I think it was. Uh, we had our first meeting in Lisbon, uh, what's that, 10 months ago. We've had four meetings in that time. We've delivered 20 papers over, well, two meetings, really. We had some small stuff in Waterford. Uh, in that time of nine months, we have a fairly active cohort of researchers from 10 countries. We have some who, there's, there's, it's, it's, it's an approximate figure, as you can imagine. There's a little bit more than that. Uh, there's a number of researchers, there are 20. That looks a very like one to two. It's not quite like that. There's some countries represented more than others. Uh, and the gender participation is a little bit out of line with some of the figures Martin was talking about earlier. We're not as clean 50-50, but currently we're 16 uh, females and four males. But look, it's, it's an embryonic group. It's in its young stages. It'll grow. Uh, so these figures are in transit almost, you know, uh, I suppose for the one for better thing. So this was our first uh, output it, just under a year ago. As I said, the, 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 the canvas was fairly blank and broad. We went for three entries and we ended up with collections of papers that tried to do a lot of things actually and did them well. But what that told us was that uh, when we were looking at Red, Hill and Daisy, that we needed a regionally centric approach to dealing with this issue. So what we did was we grouped into Romance languages, Germanic, etc. You get you get where I'm going. So that gave us a good base and that even though I would say there was elements of that, that was an excellent meeting, but what it gave us was a better platform to move from. So on that day, that was a two day, sorry, uh, if I remember correctly, 15 papers, 18 participants, countries represented. It hasn't really changed from that day, but in nine months it probably wouldn't change. So what we came out of that meeting was deliverables. We, we ask ourselves what are our deliverables all the time in that if we're doing something, why are we doing it and what will be the end result? So we effectively set up as a formal group. Uh, we decided that we take a regionally centric approach to what we were doing as opposed to a scattergun. We had to snipe this a little bit more. Um, and the Zotero database gave us some concentric point to say if I'm living in Ireland, for example, and someone's in I don't know, Italy, well, we have a shared database. Now, that sounds incredibly basic, but when you're setting up a research group that's across 10 countries and is coming in on the three-quarter stage of a cost action, you have to have some quick movement and it has to be modest as well at that. Um, the next meeting we went to, guys, was the Budapest meeting. I wasn't there personally, but I delivered a paper by Skype with Jeffrey, uh, so I was virtually there. This is where you can see a shrinkage in our output. The reason the shrinkage is we concentrated and it's effectively the sta part A of stage one. Countries represented for various reasons had dropped, uh, but what we did, we were finding out all the time what we're doing, is that we noticed the flora became a problematic category. This was hinted at in Lisbon, but it became more apparent in Budapest, in that we needed to resort to Latin all the time to find out what are we talking about here, because dictionaries made a number of mistakes in what they were talking about, erroneous be it, but it required some degree of clarification from us to say, you know, if we're looking at Furtier back in the 16th century, 17th century, uh, what is he exactly talking about there? Uh, can we get a Latin classifier in it? So that helped us. Uh, we, I suppose, validate our own methods that this regionally centric, uh, centered research approach worked, as opposed to people maybe writing papers together that didn't necessarily have any direct output. So it was concentrated on what we did. An area that came out of it that's relevant predominantly to myself and Jeffrey was um, in that we live in countries, Jeffrey in France, where there are some minority languages, Breton, for example, and I live in Ireland where Irish is, <laughs> you could consider a minority language actually now, and that there were no monolingual dictionaries, particularly in Irish that I know of. Um, if they're not, it wouldn't be considered modern anyway. So that developed a, a sort of a perfect storm in a way because it told us, right, we have to consider monolinguals for this and that we maybe have a separate project that becomes something different where we can look at bilingual dictionaries for different reasons. But currently we're focusing on monolingual dictionaries, which sort of leaves me standing spectating a little bit sometimes, but we have other things lined up uh, with that. So then we moved on to the training school. Uh, I hosted it. I was ably assisted in the organization all the way throughout. Um, we came up with this idea of the landscape, and I can genuinely say that from the three days we had there, we had papers on etymology, morphology, dialectical verbs, 
bilingual dictionaries for users, bilingual dictionaries as cultural artifacts. We had a TEI session and we had an Atlas TI session. Um, and in most cases, I have to say, if not in all, people had their minds focused on the landscape idea, was communicate what, we, what the traditional aspects of lexicography and lexicology through a centered context being the landscape. So in the division of the training school, and I suppose what we're doing is old boundaries and new beginnings. It could have been new boundaries, and well, I suppose that's my titling again, but it, 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 was, it was effectively to say on the tin what we're doing behind it, you know. So uh, there were the sessions. The, we had 17 participants. Ultimately, there was 21 invited for various reasons. Those four couldn't attend, uh, which was fine. Uh, the trainers, there was a geographical breadth in them, but what this was key to doing is that and what you will see in final slides came out of it was that we had, well, some of whom were, well, I suppose the majority of whom were new, was that people learned about what we did. People learned about this action, actually, even though whether Landlex was their priority or not, I'm not necessarily sure in, in, in the uh, attendance at the event, but actually it promoted what we did and what we did as a collective. Uh, and we received quite a uh, peaked interest in it following in the immediate days after it and still do. So, and that's what I think we are looking at the outcomes there, was that what worked for us was that if you had thematic-centered lexicography, because in the Landlex group of, uh, in working group four, a number of us are working at university level. So, a priori, our function is teaching. So we must consider that as well, that when we're doing something, we generally put our teaching head on and use that as an ambit for, for what we deliver. But also we respect that as people in the group who are full-time researchers, so it's, there's a very, very good balance and a good mix. So we, there's, a, there's a good reciprocity between what we do, but there's an element of the traditional and the new, and hence the title, the old boundary and the new beginning, for us all, actually. Um, I know it's big figures, and I've been involved in the EU before in gender balance, but the gender balance obviously sort of kept with the trainees weren't necessarily, necessarily landlex, but it keeps with where the, the group was going in the composition. The teaching uh, trainers, I aimed from my outset to strike a balance in it and thankfully got that, but uh, that's, that's, that's one of the benefits of it. So what are we going to do next? Um, look, we know we're, uh, for us, uh, given that we're in our infancy generally, um, our next big problem will be coordination and financing of that coordination. Um, so we have those challenges on, but we have some ideas. We have phase one data set, the foundations are laid, the foundations might be a bit uneven, but they're laid. And we know where we're going from with it. The phase two data set is a bit of a, don't mention it at the moment, because we're working with the Zotero database. We're trying to get that complete firstly on this set. We're not moving on until that phase one is done. But we would imagine that uh, we could probably put a terminal end to phase one data set soon. How, how would you define soon? I don't know, but we have to go to stage two. Obviously, as you might remember this morning, we have a proposal for dissemination that's been accepted. Um, that will generally fall around the work from Budapest and Lisbon. And that's quite a good output for us in that what we can see what we'll do. It, it'll allow us to put some meat on the bones of it and tell you what we publicly do in writing as well, if you haven't seen much of it before. So thankfully, we're at an approved stage with that. There's a, a long work here, a year's work ahead, and there'll be, you'll see a, a call and a proposal for that, for chapters on that soon. Um, one of the key things from the, and the sense of goodwill, I think, of, 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 the, of the teaching team from the training school was that we have proposed to set up an international teaching network that, uh, I don't think I'm talking out of turn here, but we'll probably center on lexicography and the delivery of that. Uh, it won't be exclusive to Landlex, and it won't be exclusive to the training school team, but there's a very, very good core there of experience, uh, knowledge, enthusiasm, motivation, and also people that generally think they have a good news story to tell, and I think we do with this one. Uh, however, we know there are challenges ahead, and as I mentioned, the finance, certainly is a challenge for us. We can go nowhere without that. Skype is great, Zotero database is great, but we still know what we have to do. So within, within the sort of spectrum of where we're going to try to exist financially uh, and do our work within the next short term, one to three years, I would imagine uh, we'll be looking for bilateral mobility funding, which will allow us to move to each other, 
via a type of short-term scientific mission, not through this uh, group necessarily, but also what's available nationally in our own countries. And one of my closing points from the training school was that we will seek to engage people to say, what funding's in your country? How can we get this resurrected in another way and move and disseminate and talk and develop? I suppose, but the next place you will see us will probably be in here, if anyone's going to that. Uh, again, we never stray too far from what we believe is the ethos and the raison d'etre of the group, which is lexicography and lexicology, which are found in the titles of WG4. So we expect to have not a special session, but a land lex session at this. So we will be somewhere in the middle of phase one and phase two. We're going to hopefully, although I don't think I'll be there personally, but I know from Jeffrey Nalina and uh, another colleague who's going to help out hopefully, that we'll be giving some further demonstrations of what we do, talking generally about the background of what we are and hopefully getting a bit bigger for the future. So I think that's me maybe just right on time. And I hope I don't have any, but I'll take some questions if you want. <laughs> hopefully I won't. Yep. Sorry, go ahead, yeah. Just a shy question. Yeah. Um, uh, you are aware of the existence of the Atlas uh, Linguarum Europae? Me Wh personally. Uh, your working group. Uh, because, because I'm sure that there is the lexical data for all European languages and even dialects for Red and Hill and perhaps even for Daisy. So you need not collect it anymore. Yeah, I, I lacking colleagues, uh, maybe some people might answer. I don't know if that has been mentioned at a previous um, meeting. It's, it's, it may be news to me, but it may not be to others. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think we're about more than that, though. Uh, it, that's, I'm making it sound very narrow. Uh, that You're saying the data is there. But what we're trying to do is also do a little bit more linkage and exploratory the, work than the, just... The Ale. Ale is, a, an, an, uh, uh, is not a digital product. Mm. No, 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 I, I know, but I, we, we have a little bit more than that, though, I think, to be honest, in terms of... It, 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 it's, it, you're, it's, it's not just... A, we're not just becoming a point of consultation, either, like saying that the data is already there. We're not a data manufacturer. It's a community of research that has a common concept that's going to disseminate that, but also create connections, comparisons, and analysis that maybe don't exist in that framework. We will certainly look at it yeah. and see what we can add on it, for sure. I would say, look at it. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, if I there are escaped, no more I? questions, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, I break. suggest we rearrange the front of the room and go over to the panel discussion. Thank you, Thank Chris. Thank you, thanks.